What is going on everybody, Schwayze here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking over 25 fun, cool, and interesting features of the 2024 GMC Hummer EV SUV. <music> Now, before we dive into today's video, I do want to extend a huge thank you to EV Auto of Woods Cross, Utah for giving me the opportunity to review this amazing vehicle for you all today. If you guys are in the market for a new or gently used EV, make sure you reach out to them and let them know that Swayze sent you. I'm going to put all their contact information and social media down in the description below. Okay, so what is the GMC Hummer EV SUV? Well, I'm sure you've heard about it. I'm sure you've seen a handful on the roads, but this is the all-electric SUV. SUV from Hummer. Remember the old school Hummer, the H2 over there, the H1? Well, this is the revival of it in all electric form, and this is the SUV version. So last year they introduced the pickup truck, and this year they finally introduced the SUV. And this particular vehicle in front of me is for sale currently at EV Auto, but I'm not sure it's going to last long. So I'll try to put a link to this particular vehicle down below in the description, but by the time you're watching this video, it may be sold. But check out their other inventory as well. Well, now this is the first edition version. So there's two models of the Hummer EV SUV, the regular edition and the first edition. And the first edition obviously is limited production and they also include a lot of standard features that you have to option for on the regular edition. Now this vehicle comes with three motors, uh, three electric motors. There's two in the back and one in the front. You also get an exclusive color on the first edition. In case you guys are wondering, this is called Moonshot Green and it's a matte color. Color. This isn't a wrap or anything like that. This is actual paint and it looks really good. Now you'll notice the lunar theme on the inside and outside of the car starting with the color being moonshot green because this is kind of a moonshot of a vehicle. You know, this isn't your traditional electric vehicle like a Bolt EV which is a little bit more commuter friendly than something like this. This vehicle definitely screams Hummer through and through. And even though this vehicle is all electric, it carries a very similar brand to the old H2 Hummer. It's big, it's massive, it's powerful. It definitely has a presence to it, which is not something you can say about a lot of electric vehicles on the market today, especially just your common commuter cars. Now, every single Hummer, whether it's the SUV or the pickup truck, rides on GMC's Ultium platform. And no, that is not the name of an Avengers movie. Ultium is the name that GM calls its platform for electric vehicles. So it's that skateboard platform where your electric batteries are located underneath and the body sits on top. And this is the same platform that they use on the Cadillac Lyric the Silverado EV, and pretty much every single EV coming to the market from GMC is going to be riding on this platform. And the Hummer is one of the first vehicles to feature it. Okay, now starting off with the length of this vehicle, it's definitely a long SUV. The length of this vehicle is 196.8 inches without that rear wheel and 206.7 inches with that spare tire. Now, in terms of what this compares to, the Ford Explorer is just about the same length when you exclude that spare tire. So it's about the same size as like a three row midsize SUV, but this one does not offer a third row. It is only two rows. And so that's why it feels a little bit extra large inside and out. Now, in terms of height, this is sitting around 77.8 inches high and both the length and the height is actually a little bit smaller than the pickup truck. So if you're looking for the smaller Hummer of the two, the SUV is the one to get. Now, the width of this vehicle is probably where it's most noticeable, and it's actually the exact same width as the pickup truck. We're talking 93.7 inches wide from side view mirror to side view mirror. Now, that is almost eight feet wide. It's an immensely wide vehicle, and you'll definitely notice that when you're sitting inside. Now, as you may be aware with lots of other wide vehicles, anything over 80 inches wide, which this one is over a foot wider, requires having amber lights all across the front end. So this one chooses to put them on the roof. These are amber lights. And then you have the amber markers over here on the left and the right hand side. And amber lights are federally mandated so that people are aware that you're gonna take up a little bit more space than the average vehicle. Now for the first set of features I wanna show off, it has to do with the headlights. First off, you have a beautiful light bar up front. And as you unlock the vehicle, they kind of sweep from left to right, meet in the middle in between the M's and kind of combine this large LED light light strip. Now what's cool here is you still have essentially a seven slot grill with the Hummer letters and this of course doesn't need a front grill because it is an electric vehicle. There's no internal combustion engine but it's kind of cool that they have this throwback to original Hummers with their seven slot grills and then you'll notice
notice all the different LED lights within the headlight. And what's cool here is when you're charging the vehicle, these LED lights will actually flash on how far this vehicle has charged. So from the outside, you can actually tell whether this vehicle is charging and how much charge is left. Now, the interesting thing here is these are actually the headlights. So they're located in the bumper. Moving to the right of the headlight, you do have recovery hooks over here and they're very, very solid. You of course have parking sensors as well and you've got skid plates located underneath the vehicle. Coming along the side, you'll see there's actually a cutout so that you have a better approach angle. Now moving towards the back, you'll notice your LED tail lights over here and similar to the front, you may have noticed that they have this H design as well. This is kind of a sideways H, so I'm gonna turn the camera over here, but beautiful LED tail lights, and then you got your GMC badge. I think that's the only GMC badge on the vehicle. And then of course you have your large wheel cover as well. And this has, again, the surface of the moon embossed into it. Now down below here, you have more recovery hooks. You have your functionality here for towing a trailer. Of course, you have your tow hitch as well, and then your license plate bracket over here on the left-hand side. And then you'll notice back here as well, again, a little bit of a cutout so that your departure angle is not impacted by the large bumpers. Now, since this carries the Hummer name, you may be wondering, does this live up to the chops of being an impressive off-roader? And my answer to that is yes. So let's talk about some of the off-road goodies that are baked inside the Hummer EV. Now, you may be upset, but you do have independent front suspension on all four tires. However, you still have 13 inches of suspension suspension travel in the front and 13 inches of suspension travel in the rear. Now, for those of you that are worried about puncturing the battery pack, which like I said, sits in this section of the vehicle, GM has done a few things to protect it so you don't have any type of accidents or fires. First off, they utilize steel plates and shields around the drive unit and the battery pack. But if you choose the extreme off-road package, that provides full underbody armor. Not only do you get skid plates, but you also get rock sliders. So that way, if you do go off-roading and you scrape something, you're not risking damaging this vehicle. Now, in case you're wondering, the extreme off-road package also gets you a mechanical front locker and a rear virtual locker. I say it's virtual because there are two motors in the back, and so they essentially just mimic the same amount of power to both. So it's not a true mechanical mechanical locker like it is up front, but it's meant to give you a similar feel. Now for the next cool feature in terms of off-roading, I'm gonna have to jump inside and show you a specific mode. Now, as you can see, you have this digital gauge cluster display. And then down here, if you click this suspension height button at the top on the rotary knob, you can set it to extract height. And then if you set this vehicle to terrain mode, this thing will raise upwards of six inches in its extract mode to be able to get you that additional ground clearance. And let me show you what that looks like from the outside. Now, as it's raising the front and the back, let me talk about the ground clearance in general. So starting off, the ground clearance on the standard height of the Hummer EV SUV is just around 12 inches. However, if you put it in extract mode, you get upwards of 16 inches of ground clearance. That is incredibly impressive. I mean, this thing looks like it's on stilts and I think it might still be raising its air suspension. That is definitely a class leader. 16 inches of ground clearance on like a Jeep or a Bronco is gonna take a lot of aftermarket components. And with the Hummer EV SUV, you get it right out of the box. All right, now let's talk about approach breakover and departure angle while it's in this jacked up mode now first off the approach angle in the standard mode is 44.3 degrees in this extract mode you're looking at 49.6 degrees the breakover angle is typically 27.1 degrees again in this extract mode you're looking 34.4 degrees and then your departure angle with the spare tire is normally 41.8 degrees but in this extract mode you're looking at 45.6 degree departure angle now in terms of water fording you can go through 28 inches of water in the standard mode or 32 inches in the extract mode now let's talk about the wheel and tire setup now this one comes with the standard wheel and tire setup, not the off-road package. This one comes with the more road-ready 22-inch wheels. You're looking at Goodyear Wrangler Territory AT tires. They're 305 width by 55 sidewall. In case you're wondering what that translates to, this is a 35-inch tire. Now, if you do choose the extreme off-road package, you can still get the same 35-inch tire, but you're going to get Goodyear Wrangler Territory MTs, which are the same ones that come on the Ford Bronco Sasquatch, and you'll only get 18-inch wheels. So you have a thicker sidewall so that when you take this thing off-roading, you have a little bit more tire cushion. Now, GMC says that you can actually fit a 37-inch tire with no modification. So if you guys really wanna go the off-road route, 
Choose the extreme off-road package and then upgrade to 37 inch tires and they'll fit just fine. Now also, if you do choose the terrain mode as your driving mode, you'll notice that there's a button over here and you click that, that's one pedal driving. So that's where you can essentially just use one pedal to drive this vehicle off-road. So you step on the gas, it'll move forward. As soon as you let off the gas, this vehicle will come to a complete stop. So it makes it maybe a little bit easier to go off-roading, especially when you're rock climbing and you don't wanna keep jumping from the gas to the brake pedal. And then as I'm sure you've seen in other videos, the Hummer EV, pickup truck and SUV comes with rear wheel steering. So you can turn this upwards of 10 degrees to make your turning radius a little bit better. And honestly, just driving around this parking lot and on the road, I've noticed this thing does have a pretty good turning radius for a vehicle this large. But there's also something called the crab walk where this vehicle will actually turn the rear wheels at the same direction as the front wheels. And so the benefit to that is if you're coming up on an obstacle in front of you and there's not that much space to turn this vehicle around, well, you can activate that mode and that way this vehicle will actually drive diagonally and avoid the object in front of you, making it a little bit easier to off-road in some tight conditions, especially considering the width of this vehicle. All right, now's a good time to hit that pause button and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly car videos. That helps me bring more amazing cars like this to the channel. All right, now let's get back to the video. Okay, now let's talk about the next set of cool features, which is the powertrain. First off, in terms of battery pack, it's a little bit different than what's in the pickup truck. The pickup truck has over 200 kilowatt battery. The SUV, for for some reason has 170 kilowatt battery. So it's a little bit smaller. And because of that, your range is a little bit smaller as well. You're looking at 314 miles of electric range. Now the battery runs on the 800 volt architecture for DC fast charging. So that means that if you plug into a level three DC fast charger, it's gonna be a little bit quicker than some of the 400 volt systems of some of the electric cars on the market. Now the advantage to the SUV is you have power offboarding capabilities, which means you can actually charge different devices, your home, maybe even a another electric vehicle, all using the battery inside the Hummer EV. There is also an energy app located within your infotainment screen, and that will allow you to charge the vehicle now or later, set a schedule, and then you can set your home charging location. Also, if you use the Google functionality that's built into the vehicle, Google Maps will actually tell you exactly how much charge you'll have along the way and to your destination. Now let's talk about the power. I'm sure that's what you're waiting for because this thing produces a whopping 830 horsepower and what GMC says is 11,500 pound-feet of torque. Now, they're using kind of a different metric to measure their torque figures. Realistically, this thing has around probably 11 to 1,200 foot-pounds of torque. Now, because of the weight of the batteries, this thing weighs somewhere around 9,000 pounds, but even still, this thing will do zero to 60 in about three and a half seconds when you use the Watts to Freedom mode, which is the WTF mode, as GMC calls it. Now, it is a little bit slower than the three seconds in the pickup truck, but it's still incredibly quick. All right. Right, now let's jump inside and talk more in depth about some of the cool features on the interior. There are two colors on the first edition. This one is called the Lunar Shadow Interior. So it's got jet black with some of these taupe is what they call it. And then you've got this tech bronze. And personally, I really like it. I think they have a variation of like a black and a white, but I think this will probably stay cleaner over time. Now starting off with the door panel, you do have soft touch materials all throughout, but this isn't leather. It's kind of like this rubberized cloth material, but you do have some stitching over here. I will complain that this is hard touch plastic over here for a vehicle at this price point I would expect a little bit better but this is meant to be more of a rugged off-road vehicle you got this grab handle over here with some bronze accents your aluminum door handle over here lock and unlock your memory settings and your typical window switches now this material extends all the way down here where you have your Hummer EV embossed into this material a little bit more of that bronze accent and you got a little bit of ribbed plastic material moving down here you got your cup holders and a little compartment and then you've got your speaker grill over here now this particular vehicle comes with a 14 speaker Bose audio system and then there's the Sea of Tranquility map located on the speaker grill itself. And that is, again, a reference to the moon. Now, climbing inside, you do have a sidestep over here. And then you have your seven slots over here, like your front grill does, with a little bit more H emblems on the left and right side. Now, you do have memory seats here with lumbar support. These are heated and ventilated as well. And then climbing inside, everything is just massive on the interior. First off, take a look at that air vent with your bronze accents all around it. Down here, you have your parking brake. You got your 
electronic front trunk, which we'll show off in a minute, lane keep assist, and then you've got your electronic release for your tailgate. And then moving above you, this is all hard touch material over here. Again, another complaint I have for a vehicle at this price point, but this is an off-road vehicle. It's meant to be more durable, kind of like a Bronco or a Wrangler, just electric and a little bit more expensive. Now coming to the steering wheel on the left-hand side is how you control your adaptive cruise control, your lane centering. And this particular vehicle comes with GMC's Super Cruise feature. And that is this little sensor on the steering wheel, which actually watches you along with the sensor behind the steering wheel. And on upwards of 400,000 miles of US and Canadian roads, you can actually let go of the steering wheel as long as you're paying attention to the road and drive hands-free. It's a really advanced system and some of the best in the industry, but it's only on pre-mapped highways. Now, speaking of Super Cruise, there are some other safety features. As I noted earlier, you have blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist. This vehicle can also find a parking spot for you and park the vehicle, which will be very necessary given the proportions of this truck. I also wanna mention that you can also access what routes are available on Super Super Cruise using the Google Maps. And on the right hand side are your controls for your 12.3 inch instrument gauge cluster display that I briefly showed off earlier. Now turning this vehicle on, I will mention that the graphics on the center display and on the infotainment screen were actually designed by video game developers. That's why you have all these cool graphics that you normally don't find in a car. But what's cool here is as you navigate using the buttons on the right hand side of the steering wheel, you can actually change the display layout. So you've got lunar theme, you've got a clean theme, which looks a little bit different. You've got your sport mode. There's an off-road mode and there's a digital mode. And so it changes a little bit of what you're looking at. It looks kind of cool. And then for the most part, it's pretty easy to navigate. Most of your stuff is located on the right-hand side. And then you can simply toggle through your GPS, your info, your layout, your phone. And then you can also customize the left and right side info using the buttons over here as well. Now, moving inwards, this is where you have your large 13.4-inch touchscreen display. And this does have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto and built-in Google, like I said, so you can ask it questions just like a smart home device. Now, there are some cool features baked in here. This is your typical GM software where you have your quick access buttons over here on the left-hand side and then your main menu over here in the center. But it does look a little bit different because your background is not black and red like you typically find in GMC products. It has this kind of lunar theme to it. Couple cool features here is if you go into your off-road mode, not only will it pull up various menus where you can show your G-forces, the angle of your vehicle, you can also see the angle of the steering and elevation, all that, but you can also click this auxiliary button and that will pull up your six auxiliary switches that you can activate with the push of a button. So this vehicle does come pre-wired with a bunch of different switches throughout the vehicle and you can wire up light bars or winches and activate them using the buttons on the infotainment screen. Now, as I showed earlier, you can spin this rotary dial, which actually feels really good and cycle through your different drive modes. You've got my mode, which is customizable, of course. You've got off-road, terrain, tow haul mode, and you've got normal mode. And uh, it's a cool graphic as the vehicle is kind of busting through different walls. It's a very digitized type of futuristic theme to it. Now you can quickly get to your home menu by pushing that button and then you can open up your cameras button. Now this does come with a variety of different 360 degree cameras. So you have your front facing camera, you can do your rear facing camera as well. What is odd is you have the wheel cover that kind of blocks part of the camera. So you'll see the corners you can't actually see because well, the wheel cover is blocking it. But for the most part, you can see everything that's actually necessary. Uh, you of course have your trailer camera as well. I mean, it's a really high definition camera. I mean, you've got a very good view of what's going on above you. I don't see any type of 3D mode. However, you can option this car with upwards of 17 cameras, including two underbody cameras, where if you're taking this vehicle off-road, you can see exactly what's going on underneath the vehicle in the front and the back so you don't scrape anything unnecessarily. Speaking of cameras, you also of course have GM's rear view camera mirror, which was pretty much pioneered by Cadillac. And then while we're up here and it's getting dark, so my apologies, I do want to show off this standard infinity roof. Now, these panels are all removable. In fact, you can actually remove them and store them in the front trunk, which I'll show off in just a second. Now, this one comes with the optional sky panel, so they're actually see-through, but the standard one comes with opaque panels that are still removable and you can still store them. Once you remove these panels, you can also remove this little eye bar in the middle of the driver and passenger seat, and that bar can be stored in the rear trunk. So you can have a true open air experience in the front row. It pretty much makes this vehicle into a convertible similar to what you'd find in a Wrangler or a Bronco. 
I also like the fact that it is tinted so that if you have the sun blazing down on you, there's no cover here, but this tint should provide a little bit of extra protection and remove some of that heat from the interior cabin. Now moving below the screen, you do have your climate control settings over here. This is actually a screen, but you've got toggle switches to control the various settings. So you can adjust your dual zone climate, your heated and ventilated front seats. And then moving below that, you have another set of toggles for your heated steering wheel, your traction control off, which is how you can activate the WTF mode and your parking sensors and your self park feature where with the push of a button, this will automatically open the self park mode where it will search for a parking spot. Down below that are your air vents. And then to the left of that is your trailer brake controller. And then if you open up this little compartment here, that will reveal your wireless charging pad along with two USB ports and a little compartment over here where you can store random goodies. Moving further back, you've got your cup holders. And then this is your typical GMC pickup truck gear selector. Feels really good. And then moving behind this little control panel is your soft armrest over here. Again, it's got the same material that's on the door panel. It's kind of like this cloth material. And then you've got a rubberized surface over here where you can store your keys or other valuables. Opening this up, a large compartment in the center, which is to be expected for a Hummer. And you've got a cigarette style power outlet located over here as well. So you can plug in different devices. Moving to the passenger side, you've kind of got this cool texture to it. And then you've got edition one script written over there on the passenger side as well. Looks really good. I like the different color choices on the interior. Now jumping into the second row, same materials over here on the door panel as well and a smaller speaker grill and cup holder. Taking a look at these seats, they look really nice as well and they're incredibly wide. That's one of the reasons why I said you'll notice the width on the interior. You could easily fit three people back here. Now I will say there is something that is reminiscent of the H2 Hummer for me back here in this center arm console. For some reason, this thing looks like a Hummer and I don't really know why. It's kind of got that boxy flat shape to it. You've got rear climate control settings here with your temperature and your fan speed and you've got rear heated seats, which really isn't that surprising because I reviewed an H2 Hummer last year that also had heated seats in the back. No ventilated seats back here. I will say the air vents do seem like they're a little bit on the lower end, but you do have two USB ports and you've got a little storage compartment underneath where you can hide your phone or a wallet. And then down at the very bottom, you do have a household power outlet. Now, in terms of legroom, this is me sitting behind myself and there's 39.2 inches of second row legroom. Now that passenger seat is pretty far back, but a really good amount of space, definitely more than the H2 Hummer that came before it. And then headroom is great back here as well. Although if you're over six foot tall, you might start running up against this roof panel, but overall it's a pretty spacious interior. You do have a center arm console with two cup holders as well. And it's got the same textured material you'll find on the front center arm console. All right, now to jump into the trunk, you actually just push this button over here, or you can electronically open it using the key fob itself. So that's a cool feature where if you double click on that button over there, it will automatically open up this large trunk hatch. And jumping into the back, one thing to notice is you do have a really high lift height over here because your batteries are located underneath the vehicle itself. Now jumping back here, not too much to report, although it is a very large area. We're talking 35.9 cubic feet of space behind that second row. Now the nice thing here is you do have buttons to lower that second row. So you push it, automatically lowers, and with the second row folded down, you have 81.8 .8 cubic feet of space behind the first row. And as you'll notice here, it is a pretty flat loading floor. So this pretty much turns into kind of like a truck bed area where you can load large items. These are actually your bags that you can store those roof panels to put it into that front trunk. And then underneath here, you have a small compartment, which is where you can store that eye bar and where you can store your charging cable equipment. Also with the push of a button on the inside, you can actually lower this rear windshield to give you a little bit more open air experience. Now in terms of towing capacity, the SUV has a max towing of 7,500 pounds. All right, now let's jump into the front. So you simply unlock the vehicle click on the buttons on the key fob, and then the front trunk will automatically open up for you. So it is power operated. And then climbing inside here, you've got 11.3 cubic feet of space. And like I said, you can fit all the roof panels in here. There's not too much to report back here aside from a pretty high lift height, but you do have an LED light over here and a 12 volt power outlet next to the emergency release hatch. Then you got Hummer EV located over there as well. And then to close it, you simply push on the key fob or there's a button located underneath the front bumper and it will automatically close. Okay, for the next feature, we're gonna talk about the acceleration here because that is a huge draw of this Hummer EV because the internal combustion Hummer never had the type of acceleration and performance that the Hummer EV has. Okay, so here we're at a stop. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, it's weird that there's no noise 
coming from any exhaust or any engine. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy amounts of power. The only thing you hear is the stuff flying around inside of the vehicle. You know, I've driven a lot of electric vehicles and I never get used to the power. It's, it always is mind boggling to me that you can have this much power in a vehicle that weighs, I mean, this is 9,000 pounds. You know, also to point out here, you do have a sound experience inside of the cabin. So uh, this vehicle, similar to some of the other electric vehicles I've reviewed, has some fake, you know, electric sound pumped in. It's not meant to simulate exhaust. It's just meant to, you know, increase or improve the sound uh, experience within the car because that's kind of what adds to, you know, making you feel like you're going a little bit quicker is having some sort of sound pumped inside of the cabin. But, you know, here I am turning this vehicle and that rear wheel steering, I mean, I would never be able to turn even a typical four-door crossover in that small of a turning radius. This thing feels light on its feet, which is not something I would ever say about a large SUV of this size. You have such a quick driving vehicle. You know, and that's not using the WTF launch control either. That's just straight out acceleration. This thing feels so quick. Uh, it, it's similar, I would say, to the Rivian R1T I reviewed. Maybe it's a little bit slower because uh, that one weighed a little bit less. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, this is plenty quick for really anybody. You could easily pass anybody on the freeway. All right, well, there you have it, folks. That was over 25 cool, fun, and interesting features of the 2024 Hummer EV SUV. What are your thoughts on the Hummer EV? It's definitely true to its roots with being a very brash and big and very noticeable vehicle. Whether that's electric or internal combustion, you definitely see this vehicle driving down the road. Now, the price tag isn't cheap. The first edition starts around $105,000, but future editions will be coming out somewhere in the $80,000 range. Still not a cheap vehicle, but it is kind of similar to some of the large three-row SUV competition out there. It also is an incredible off-road vehicle. Lots of off-road goodies, lots of capability, and this is also a little bit more noticeable than the standard SUV EVs that are coming to the market in the next 12 months. But let me know your thoughts on the Hummer EV down in the comments below, and let me know what your favorite feature was in today's video. Also check me out on all the social media at Shwayze underscore. Until next time, everybody, I hope you stay Shwayze, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.